Hey guys, welcome back. It's Grim, and today we're looking at the top five Conflict of Nations game modes. So yeah, it's gonna be a banger video, and uh, let's see what we got here. So this is my own opinion, so I'm just letting that out there. It's my own opinion. Um, I have most of my experience on mobile, but I am learning on the computer. So uh, as you can see already, number five, Battleground USA. And uh, the reason for this is because usually when I play this game mode, I get a lot of beginner uh, players playing in, in it. I mean, like, usually it's just like filled with, you know, noobs and stuff like that. But I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. It's that it's just they don't really play and it's not active. So it's not as fun as I would like it to be. But then again, there are a lot of interesting state or nations that you could select and that you could be that have cool flags and stuff like that. So yeah, if you like that, you probably enjoy this game mode. But um, generally, the map is very clustered. Um, it's definitely not the best map in the game. Uh, yeah, it's just very clustered. It ends up with, you know, not the best gameplay. But it's definitely not, you know, the worst game mode in the game. But it is the number five spot. And my next spot, number four, is Flashpoint. So yeah, Flashpoint, uh, 30 players. Um, for beginner and intermediate players, although I have seen some more advanced players playing this, like high ranks since the 40s, 50s, and above. Um, and I think that's just because it is a game mode that is very good. It's a good game mode, um, but one of the things it lacks is that since it's 30 players, there are limited nations that you could choose. Um, say if you're playing with a friend, you know, it's going to be probably limited to what you could do, unless the game is, you know, just starting up, of course. But, um, yeah, it's a, it's a nice map. It's a good map, but, you know, the, there's many, many Eastern nations, and there's only a few West. I believe it's only, like, Canada, USA, and Cuba. So, yeah, it kind of gets, you know, a little scary if you're on the East side, unless you're in a coalition, you know, with a, a few of those other nations in the East side. It's going to be hard to combat the West uh, of Flashpoint, because all those European nations together could be very strong, especially if... You know, a few of them are in a coalition and they make it out of Europe, you know, very strong together. But yeah, it's a generally a pretty good game mode. I, I definitely enjoy playing this one and uh, it's our number four spot. Coming in at our number three spot is World War Three. Now, this is 64 players, of course. Um, I generally think this would be for more intermediate or advanced players just because I definitely experienced uh, those higher ranks in this game mode. And I think it's because of how this game mode plays out. It's very tactical. You have to know what you're doing. You have to be active. Um, this is one times, of course. Uh, I'm not talking about four times World War Three in this one. But uh, yeah, this is generally a great uh, game mode here. I definitely like this game mode. There's plenty of cool nations to choose from. 64 players, so 64 playable nations. Um, it's the best map overall, I would say. If you're looking for just a big uh, open map, it's the whole world, of course. So. It, it's just a really great map and uh, yeah it's our three spot and uh, yeah definitely a great map lots of good players in it and yeah and my second favorite map in conflict of nations is currently battleground europe yeah battleground europe guys um 32 players uh it's mostly for intermediate slash advanced players i would say um i do find a few you know level 10s level 15s in here but um, yeah, generally intermediate and advanced players are going to be playing this one. Um, thing I like about this map is that there's plenty of interesting nations with many cool flags to choose from. Uh, I think there are like a lot of pre-existing nations in this game mode, which is really interesting. Something I haven't seen in any of the other ones. So definitely something to, you know, role play if you guys are like that. Make a coalition, make something really cool in this game mode. Um, but yeah, the thing about this map is that most of the nations are connected, so it's a little bit, you know, clustered, but some of the rest are not, like England, Wales, Scotland, they're kind of separated, which I like, and I think there's a few northern ones, it might be like Sweden or something like that, or Denmark, and those are kind of like separated into their own little areas, but everything else is kind of just like clustered together, and it's just a big war zone right in the middle of this map. So, uh, yeah, you definitely got to pick your sides uh, wisely in this one. Because, yeah, Battleground Europe is definitely uh, a special game mode. It's definitely a lot of fun if you can get into it and, you know, get your troops mobilized quick and uh, start fighting. But, yeah, this is uh, Battleground Europe at the number two spot. 
And my number one favorite game mode in Conflict of Nations, as you can see, is Pacific Theater. Now, this game mode is very, very fun. Um, yeah, a lot of advanced players, I never really see anyone playing this game mode who really doesn't know what they're doing. Um, so yeah, a lot of advanced players playing in this one. Um, the thing about this map is that every nation is exciting to play. Um, every nation has a lot of cool flags. Um, of course, it's all like in the Asian setting. So there's plenty of these cool Asian countries I never even heard of that you could play as. And uh, there, I think they're also like pre-existing countries. They existed like a long time ago, maybe for a short period of time when they were separating from different countries. So you could play as all those countries. Um, yeah, it's 30 players, so it's a low player count map. Um, definitely a strong Navy influence. If you do not have a good Navy in this game mode, unless you're like a top left nation in this game mode, um, you're kind of out of luck because you have to have a strong Navy in this one. And the reason is because pretty much this entire map is dominated with water. I mean, there's map, there's water everywhere in this map. So if you do not have a strong Navy, you will definitely get uh, reprimanded. Yeah, so definitely got to have a strong Navy. Um, I also recommend researching the uh, amphibious tanks as they're very useful. A lot of this uh, map is uh, jungle territory and their bonuses, their defense bonuses and their attacking bonuses are very useful and very strong in the jungle uh, terrain. So yeah, I would say definitely research those. Also, you could research the, the Marine infantry, I believe, because they can embark from anywhere. It's also a big thing. Um, yeah, this is a very fun game mode. I have a lot of fun on this one. Uh, yeah, strong Navy is definitely the focal point in, uh, in this game mode. And uh, yeah, I think that's going to be it, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed this top five. Let me know what you guys think in the comments about my top five. Of course, this is my own opinion, but you guys could say whatever you want in the comments. I, I, I'd like to see what you guys say, honestly, because I think that, you know, these game modes are great. Um, but yeah, guys, uh, let me know in the comments. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And uh, Grim out.